In this video, I'm going to describe how to take a Z stack. So to do that, I'm going to use a slide that has a bunch of neurons on it. Um, I have uh, mapped the, um, the entire slide using AI Sample Finder, and I've already, before I started this video, found a location with a bunch of interesting neurons. And I've already adjusted the settings uh, for some acquisition uh, down here. So if I go to Live, you will see um, uh, the neurons in a particular plane. A Z stack consists of taking images at multiple planes to go through the entire three-dimensional volume. So how do we set this up? To set up a Z stack, we want to turn on the Z stack module here. When we do that, a new panel comes up um, where we can set um, the conditions under which we want to acquire the Z-Stack. And there are two general uh, possible settings. One, which is very typical when you do individual Z-Stacks, is just to mark the bottom uh, and first uh, slice where you want to start the Z-Stack and the last or top slice where you want to end it. Um, that's one approach to set the range of the Z-Stack. Um, the other is to um, set the center position and then just establish how big of a Z stack overall you want to acquire. Um, I am going to use the first last for this particular approach. For other workflows, it is better to use the center and I'll discuss those later. So if I go to live, I can set this up by going down. So rotating the focus knob towards me, you can see um, as I do that, this position changes. Um, so until I'm right below the sample, then I'm going to set that as my first slice. And then I'm going to go in the other direction, moving the focus knob away from me. You can see that this number is changing until I'm through the entire sample and I go to last. Once I've done that, I can navigate through the sample by moving this or by clicking here. So that's, for example, the center, the top, the bottom, and back to the center. Uh, the other very important parameter is the spacing of the Z slices from each other. And so you can set that to whatever you want here or use the optimal that it recommends. Uh, if you are trying to get images at the highest possible resolution, I suggest you use an interval of 0.2 or the optimal, which is typically a little bit higher. So if you're going for the absolute highest uh, possible resolution, I would do an interval of 0.2. If not, the optimal is fine. Now, if you are looking at much larger objects than what uh, are at the limit of resolution, then I would suggest you make your interval a number that's about half or a third of the size of the objects you care about to make sure you don't miss any of those objects. But we are working right now with a high resolution objective, um, and we want to get a high resolution Z stack. Um, so I am going to use the minimal interval. And for the purposes of the training to make this a little bit faster, another thing I'm going to do um, is to uh, zoom in. Uh, so I, we have a very small area at, at the optimal pixel size. So I'm going to go uh, with a zoom of 3x and just set this to confocal. And this again is just so that the, the Z stack doesn't take a long time to acquire. So I'm going to set the bottom and the top for this particular region. I'm going down right now. You can see that here. This is the bottom for this particular spot. And then the top of the Z stack for this particular spot is going to be around there. OK, so now what we're going to do is acquire a Z stack uh, by pressing Start Experiment. Now, one thing before you do this, which is critical, is if you have tiles on, which is what happens by default if you've run AI Sample Finder, if you leave that on, you must go back to the center before you start your Z stack. If you don't, it will be uh, screwed up. It won't do things properly. Um, if you're just taking one Z stack here, one Z stack there, the easiest rather than remembering to do that is to just turn tiles off. When you turn tiles off, you won't have the ability to acquire multiple positions at once, but that's something we'll cover separately. So if you just want to take one particular Z stack at one particular location, you can turn tiles off and say start experiment. If you want to leave tiles on, just make sure you go back to the center before hitting start experiment. I'm just going to turn it off. Um, and say start experiment. So you can see each one will take about 200 milliseconds. 
as it goes through, you can see the different slices. If you go to gallery mode, you can see them as they are being acquired. You can also, uh, back in 2D mode, you can scroll here and look at whatever you want. And if you want to see again where it is, you can say update or follow acquisition to go back to this mode where it shows you what it is acquiring as it goes. And you can see a visual representation of what it's doing here. So once this is complete, if you go to gallery mode, you have the entire uh, stack of Z slices. If you go to orthogonal view, this is uh, one slice in this pile of images. And this is an Y Z view. So seen from the side at this red line. So we're looking at it from the side or from the X Z view in this one at this sort of green line. And so you can see things. Um, you can also move here to move in Z. So you can see when there are things crossing over other things. Um, so for example, if you look here, you can see these two things side by side. You can see, for example, that this uh, neurite is at a higher level than this soma. You can see it. So this is a useful uh, way of looking at this information. Um, uh, another note about um, how to acquire things, if you have three channels, I recommend you use all tracks per slice. But if you have four, I would recommend you acquire using the full Z stack per track. The reason is if you have four uh, channels, uh, this microscope has three detectors and needs to physically move things between the channels. And in this mode of acquiring a Z stack, it will acquire uh, for each Z position, all the channels. So if you do it that way and you have a four channel setting, it will be slower because, it'll, is, because at each Z position, it will move something mechanical. Whereas if you acquire it this way, it'll take a full Z stack for one channel, then for another, then for another, and that will be much faster. Um, if you have three or fewer uh, channels, um, that is not gonna make much of a difference. So you could just use all tracks per slice and that's perfectly fine because there are no mechanical movements as it switches uh, between, uh, uh, between channels. Um, so another thing uh, to keep in mind is that um, if you are going to acquire a Z stack with the maximal resolution settings in both X, Y, and Z, uh, you can then do something called deconvolution, which is available on our workstation, uh, and that will significantly improve the contrast and slightly improve the resolution in Z. So if you know that you are going to acquire uh, a Z stack with these high resolution settings, you should think that you will do the deconvolution. There's no reason really not to do it. Um, and therefore, um, you can often reduce uh, the quality of these initial images. So if you had averaging, you can reduce that. <clears throat> if you um, had a slow scan speed, you can increase that um, because the deconvolution will give you sort of as a rough rule of thumb, an improvement in quality that's equivalent to about two or four X uh, averaging. So just keep that in mind. Whenever you take high resolution Z stacks, you can subsequently deconvolve them and get higher quality. So you can afford to start with a slightly lower quality image that you can acquire more quickly, which is frequently an important point uh, since you have to acquire many images. Uh, one point about the deconvolution is um, make sure that when you deconvolve the images, you save them as 32-bit floating point uh, because else you will have problems with how the intensities are scaled. And if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Um, and finally, uh, just remember again, that if you have tiles on, uh, you must start in the center for it to work. So for example, if you had set everything up, you had tiles on and then you said start experiment and didn't realize it, note that it does not go back to the first slice. It just goes down half the stack to the center. So um, you don't want that. So make sure uh, that if you have tiles on, you go to the center or just turn tiles off and it'll work just fine. Um, we will discuss later how to use things where we center, uh, where we mark the center position and then have a range. That is very useful when you want to acquire multiple positions uh, and just have it, you know, press start experiment and have it acquire all of them. Uh, but that'll be for a subsequent video.